Today's video, or this video specifically, is going to be a little bit different. Consider it as a bonus video before the Q&A video, which I'm currently working on. The amount of questions and the quality of these questions are just bloody fantastic. I think some of these questions actually deserve videos just for those separate questions. I can make separate videos about those questions because it is, you guys are amazing. And just before we kick off today's topic, thank you guys so much for 5,000 subscribers. It's a goal that I thought I would never ever, never ever in my wildest dreams would reach 5,000 people. But nevertheless, today we're gonna back away from the wild adventures and dive into some deeper and darker stuff. This video is gonna be about my experience with Dark Academia. And Dark Academia, mind you, is not a cult. Dark Academia is not an organization. Dark Academia is not prescription. You have to have a fountain pen, you have to have tweed jackets, you have to have read certain books to join this cult. That's not what Dark Academia is. I'm here trying to convince you that Dark Academia is just a collection of aesthetics that you can adhere to. It's really cool, but I just think aesthetics should be based upon something a little bit deeper than just the aesthetics. Otherwise you run the risk of just living on the surface of Dark Academia without really like deriving the full extent of the joy out of, you know, immersing yourself in the subjects and humanities and histories and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Ancient Greek, Latin, this is the episode. And my my perspective on dark academia culture. But before we start all the culture talk and all the kind of good stuff, I think we have to do the aesthetics some justice. And I'm gonna do that by snapping my fingers and to get myself into the dark academia world of things. First of all, definitions. What is dark academia? I think from my limited experience with this school of aesthetics, it is sort of nostalgic of the distant past. In my mind, dark academia is somewhat trying to emulate um, the 20th century professors. So the 20th century, if you see the 20th century professors in movies, they have sweaters, they have ties, they have, you know, tweed blazers. And the aesthetics displayed on screen and the aesthetics displayed in movies are associated typically with dark academia aesthetics. So if you want to rock this aesthetics, tweed blazers, tweed blazers, tweed jackets, tweed trench coats, and tweed sweater, tweed sweater, but just normal sweaters. And it wouldn't really hurt if you wear a tie because it just tightens the entire thing together. In simple terms, dark academia is young people trying to dress like old people. I think it's just that simple. Second component of dark academia aesthetics is the actual academia part of things. And this is the part that I think particularly deserves a lot more attention than a lot of people pay it. There are two approaches to dark academia here. One approach is sort of the outside in approach. So you've seen this aesthetic, you've you you love this aesthetic so much that you want to embody it. So you force yourself to read Lord Byron's poetry and you force yourself to read all the ancient Greek plays I'm not saying that has no value. I'm not saying that you couldn't accidentally fall in love with, you know, the poetry of Keats or the plays by Shakespeare. I am not saying that you shouldn't, you know, educate yourself upon that topic. But the risk of this outside-in approach is that um, it might not align with your value. It might completely go out of alignment with, you know, exactly who you are, exactly the sort of aspirations that you have and the sort of things that you you know, wish to actually get instead of just pursuing this one-off aesthetics right here. And in terms of aesthetics, you can just buy the corresponding clothing without worrying about, you know, you don't actually have to know ancient Greek or Latin to, you know, embody the aesthetics. You can just work on a clothing part. So there's the danger. If you want to embody dark ac academia aesthetics of, you know, forcing yourself to learn about subjects that you otherwise just would never touch, that's a common thing. That's a common thing that I just wouldn't really recommend. I encourage you people as polymaths, as people that have multiple interests, to go explore the world. However wide and vast that you want to explore different subjects and disciplines, but by God, don't dive into things. Don't dive into some esoteric things that you don't exactly want to learn about just for the sake of aesthetics. There's nothing aesthetic about, you know, pouring over a book and hating it. There's just absolutely nothing aesthetic about that. But then that leads us to the inside out approach. The inside out approach means you you are already interested in the subject area. And for me, um, I fell in love firsthand before I even became aware, before I even read the secret history, before I done any of this like dark academia stuff, I first fell in love with ancient Greek tragedies dating all the way back to 10th grade. In 10th grade, we've read this entire collection of Sophocles' um, 
Oedipus Rex and then leading up to the second play of the Oedipus series and then Oedipus died in the second series and then leading up to the play, the final play Antigone, which I thought was just absolutely fantastic. Love the language, love the tragic themes within these plays. And then that led me to this year in university. Right now I'm taking an introductory semester in um, ancient Greek theater and then we're going to move on to other theater practices later on in, in the semester. But, but right now we've just finished reading the Buckeye. And that's the sort of inside out approach that we're talking about here. A lot of people are actually inherently interested in literature, inherently interested in, you know, the plays by Shakespeare, inherently interested in the Russian literature of Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. They don't have to consciously, you know, adhere to some aesthetics just to read those books. They love the books for themselves. They love the knowledge for themselves. And the aesthetics on the outside, it's just, you know, a nice little add-on. Don't read books just because it's 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 very aesthetic to read certain hard books, but read books just because you enjoy the kind of books that you read and just enjoy immersing yourself in the culture. There's not a dancing little monster behind the curtains. I just love it. And then the third part of this video is my own personal definition of dark academia. Am I actually into dark academia or am I not? And I'm afraid to say I don't, I'm not really consciously into the aesthetics. The first time that I became aware, kind of aware of this sort of like well-dressed culture of well-learned people was from Kingsman. I was just stunned by the costume design within that movie. It's absolutely fantastic. And from there, that sort of defined my fashion sense. And then after you know, getting obsessed with literature and after you know learning a whole lot about history and after, you know, right now pursuing this sort of path towards becoming a writer, had I really become aware of the fact that, holy shit, I am playing to this thing called dark academia aesthetics. Needless to say, it's kind of cool to be able to embody something, but, but at the same time, it's just, well, it's just, a nice little add-on. I still love to do whatever the hell that I want to do. There's not a conscious adherence nor obligation to do those kind of things. And that's what I think dark academia aesthetics should really be. It should be an extension of yourself, not the core of yourself. It should encourage you to do different things, to try out different things, but it shouldn't be an obligatory tryout. You should be enjoying everything that you're learning. And that's the takeaway message from this video. I enjoy writing. I enjoy looking like a 20th century writer. I enjoy reading ancient Greek plays. I enjoy learning about ancient Greek culture, but that's not out of the obligation to fulfill to some sort of person that I want to become. This is me and the aesthetics is just, you know, a personal expression of some of the things that I deeply believe in. Mind you, you're always gonna be dissatisfied if you're always trying to live up to some certain standard and you're not exactly gonna live up to those standards. So I would recommend you to define your own sort of hobbies, your own sort of aesthetics. Maybe you've got this musician's aesthetics. All aesthetics are great, but you have to make sure that it's an expression of who you are. You're not going out of fashion by going in against yourself. And also, read the books you love. And just let the rest flow and just let the rest do their own business. And you, stay true to yourself. This is RC Walden, and I'll see you in the next video.